Right, so lesson 15 day two takes over where you know where we, we learned about the rules and uh, instead of just thinking about it graphically we want to think about how the uh, the notation of a transformation tells us what we can do with specific coordinates or specific ordered pairs we should still know what the different um, features of the function do and how they transform the function so if we consider f of x equals x the parent function then multiplying by 2 and adding 3 will shift this thing up three spaces and make it look like it's squeezing in uh, or stretching up and so we're gonna mark both of those uh, that's that's what g of x is gonna do how it's gonna be different from just the regular f of x equals x function h of x which equals negative of the quantity x minus 2 well, the negative out front is going to flip the function over the x-axis. And the minus 2 rules with hopeful explanation to just start to sink in and, and make sense. We're going to shift it to the right two spaces. We can check that out on Desmos to see what it would look like. But we have an idea already uh, from, from just looking at things. Or, or check Desmos if you want to. Okay, for notes 1 for the classwork, given f of x equals x and g of x equals 2x plus 3. So using the function from the entry task. Uh, notice what happens. When we use a zero, uh oh, that's not the number, it's a typo. When we use a zero, we get zero, and then we're gonna multiply by two, so it's still zero times two, but then we're gonna add three. That means that we can plot uh, g of x based upon f of x, where we went from zero, zero to zero, three. Uh, if we use a 1, then f of x is 1, and we're going to multiply that 1 by 2, and then we're going to add 3. Uh, negative 1 means that negative 1 goes to negative 1, and we're going to multiply by negative 2, and then that makes us have negative 2, and then we're going to add 3. So we're getting this idea, this list of uh, different values. So 2, 4, 7, negative 3, negative 6, negative 3. Okay, we have ordered pairs. We have the outside ordered pairs like 0, 3, or 1, 5. We can do that with all of them and we can eventually plot those on a graph and be able to, to compare visibly how the, the different functions are, are changing. So um, what if we have h of x? h of x is um, the negative of the quantity x minus 2. So if we go with 0, and we're going to subtract 2 first. And then we're going to flip it. That tells us that 0 goes with positive 2. Uh, 1. 1 minus 2. Negative of 1 minus 2. Negative 1. Negative 1. Negative 1 plus 2. And then flip it. 2. 2 minus 2. Flip it. Negative 3 negative 3 minus 2 and flip it right there um, order of operations happens in the transformation it's uh, following some steps for us to mess with the x and y coordinates so let's take that list, that table from the previous page, and plot them. Uh, f of x is 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 3. 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 2, 2, negative 3, negative 3. And it looks something like Let's steal this straight edge. Here we go. Okay, there's f of x. Now g of x, 
using the previous page's table. 3, 5, 1, 7, negative 3. So we're going to plot 0, 3, 1, 5, negative 1, 1, 2, 7, and negative 3, negative 3. They'll form a line. There's g of x. Okay. h of x. 2, 1, 3, 0, 5. Okay, so if the prediction of what you do with the x coordinate, the x uh, value, 0, 1, negative 1, etc., if that's right, then we should also, and then and then h of x is indeed flipped and shifted to the right. We should see this function moving over. So 0, 2, 1, 1, negative 1, 3, 2, 0, negative 3, 5. And certainly, sure enough, it is flipped and shifted to the right two spaces. There we go. There's h of x. From this point on, the whole idea of lesson 15 is to be able to graph f of x equals x, the, the parent function, and then without really doing much, uh, calculation, no more tables, no more thinking about like, okay, what's the y-intercept, what's the slope, but actually just use the information about transformations to graph the function. Take a look at exercise 3, part A. If I graph f of x equals x, it looks something like this. It has a slope of 1, 1. So that's just to give me an angle. Kind of get lined up pretty good right here. There's f of x. And then the negative 2 means I'm going to flip it over the x-axis and make it steeper. I'm also going to shift it up one space. So I'm going to go like this. I've shifted it up one space. I flipped it over the x-axis. And then I have followed a pattern of up to over 1, but in the other direction. R of x. Okay, graph f of x equals x. And then graph t of x. t of x is half the size. It's a the one half x means we are pushing every y value from one down to a half, from four down to two, from eight down to four, or in the other direction, from four to two, or from eight to four. We're pushing every, because of the one half, we're pushing every y coordinate halfway up. Still at zero, zero. Half of zero is zero. There you go. T of x. And there's our function. Okay. From just analyzing the information given to us and using the parent function in order to get to it, we get a really accurate graph. Let me set this aside. Okay, a little review. Vertical and horizontal shifts, if you're adding k, that's vertical and horizontal. No, that is um, vertically. Inside, that's left or right. So this is a typo that needs to be fixed. Uh, this is a compress vertically. K on the inside is a compress horizontally. And this is a flip over the x-axis. So in order to put everything into perspective, one, it's create the graphs based upon the information. Uh, two, it's to do that in reverse. Uh, use the information that's given in order to create the equation. So here's the graph. We have that's f of x, so f of x equals x. But then consider some important key features. I'm shifting to the right one space, 
So that would be x minus 1. Uh, I'm flipping it. So I'm flipping it from there where it would have gone up from that point on. Now it's going down. So I'm going to say it's negative. It's also going 3, 1. g of x is negative 3x minus 1. I'm going to check that with Desmos real quick. Uh, I'm going to go negative 3 x minus 1. Yep, there it is right there. You can see this line right here is actually very accurately to the right one space and flipped and down 3 over 1. Perfect. Okay. Um, this 1, by the way, tells us that that's the y-intercept. Or no, that's the x-intercept. Okay, here we go. Do the next one. We have f of x equals x. Uh, that means uh, we're, we're keeping it the same. We're shifting down one space. So if f of x equals x, then we're going to go and minus 1 to the quantity. We're also up 1 over 2. So we're going 1 half x. That's somewhat obvious. Uh, that definitely works. 1 half x minus 1. I mean, that works. That's rise over run. That's slope. Uh, another way that we could have done this is we could have said shifted to the right. So x minus 2. Uh, slope of 1 half. So 1 half x minus 2. That also worked. You can see the green line is exactly the same as the blue line. Those are two functions written differently that um, rely on maybe slightly different pieces of information, but they do give exactly the same function, ultimately the same solutions when graphed. Okay. Next page. All right. If we are able to think about a function going from x to something that involves x, so we should be able to do this in reverse. Uh, there's kind of a process that follows the order of operations to do that. Let's take a real good look at this one. So here we go. We can describe a transformation from a function that is not f of x to x, uh, thinking of undoing the transformation. So if what we have is negative 2x plus 3, we should first of all begin by subtracting 3 from both sides. So we should uh, take the, uh, the, the 3 away, and then we have uh, to divide everything by negative 2, or multiply by negative a half. And what we end up getting is a transformation in reverse. We go from 0, plug the 0 in here, because I'm going to fill it all the way out, 1, negative 1, so negative 2n plus 3. And then we're going to plug those in where this is g of x. So in the formula, I'm going to put this where g of x is located. So negative 1 half times 3 minus 3 equals 0. And negative 1 half times 1 minus 3 equals 1 and negative 1 half times 5 minus 3 that's, that's a 2 negative 1 half times equals negative 1 so negative 1 half times all of this negative 2 n plus 3 minus 3 equals well those cancel those cancel, those can equals n. So this is a, a method of removing and the, the, the transformation of g of x and finding out the original function, the parent function, x. We've undone. Here it is again. We have h of x equals 1 half x plus 2. So the first thing we should do is multiply both sides by 1 half. And then, wait, what am I doing right here? Oh, I'm sorry. This is this is going from uh, f of x to h of x. So 0, 1, negative 1, n. Then we're going to take and plug those in. So uh, 2 and 1 
and a half plus two, two and a half, and uh, negative one half plus two, one and one half, or one half n plus two. Okay, sorry, I realized I did that entire set without showing you what I was filling in the table. Really, I'm just plugging them in, right? Right here to right here. The reason why I'm showing you this is because if we have a g of x function and we want to go from g of x to h of x, maybe we need to pass through the parent function. So pass through the use of f of x is, and eventually we can write one function in terms of another. If h of x equals 1 half f of x plus 2, but f of x equals negative 1 half g of x minus 3, then we can take that expression and we can swap it out. 1 half negative one half times g of x minus three and we can add two to that this expression will transfer it's a it's a fancy expression but it'll transfer the g of x equation through some transformations until we make the h of x equation here let's use desmos to prove it Oh, that's why I needed to get that out of the way. Okay. So let's first of all start with g of x equals negative 2x plus 3. And then let's write f of x as um, negative 1 half times g of x minus 3. And you can go away. And then h of x equals, uh, where are we at with this, 1 half, let's see, it's x plus 2, right? So I'm going to make bl blue go away. We're trying to show that red and purple, like you can turn red into purple using g of x. So let's go um, 1 half times negative one half times g of x need parentheses here minus three and then plus two boom it lines up black and purple are exactly aligned I feel pretty good about that I feel pretty good that I turned g of x into some relationship of f of x but remember f of x is supposed to be this line right through the origin, the, the parent function. So, so there you go. But then I took f of x and I transformed it even further into a function of, of h of x, a little swaparoo, dippy doo, and we get that this lovely little equation that is slope, intercept, graph it. We can re-express it as this beast of an equation but this is really just inverting this and reverting that's not a word but plugging it all in we should probably try this a couple of times so i'm gonna go ahead and go to the next page here we go wait 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 okay consider the graph of g of x equals negative 2x plus 3 okay so g of x equals negative 2x plus 3. Here's the y-intercept at 0, 3. So if h of x equals 2 times g of x minus 4, then what am I trying to show here? What if I put the 3 in there? Put the 3 2 times 3 minus 4, which is 6 minus 4, which is 2. I think the y-intercept is 2. I mean, it's on the y-axis. I'm going I'm to go to Desmos. I'm going to plot it out. So in Desmos, get rid of you. Goodbye, you. Okay. 
g of x is there. h of x equals 2 times g of x minus 4. 4. Weird coloration. Let's change the color. Let's change you to black. And you know what? Sure enough. Come on, predictor mode. Sure enough. Y intercept 2. So so over here, you know, on the, on the table, I'm taking the fact that this right here is g of 0. It's the output. And I'm plugging it into this formula that's using the output and I'm able to then predict or or determine what the what the answer, what the slope or the the y intercept or other key feature will be. I guess if I have that h of x equals 2 times g of x minus 4, I can say that h of x equals 2 times negative 2x plus 3 minus 4. So we can simplify this by distribution and go negative 4x plus 6 minus 4, negative 4x plus 2. The slope is negative 4. And looking right here, Let's see from there, let's see. One, two, three, four, one. Yeah, it's totally negative four. Okay, here we go. Consider the table representing. Complete the column for h of x and list the order pairs. So negative one goes to negative three. That's because I plugged it into the original function. So I'm going to the I'm going to the, the this right here. Come on, go away, camera. There we go. All right, so I'm saying that if I take negative 1 and I put it back into the function, I get negative 3 as an answer. And if I take negative 3 and I put it into the h of x function, I get 1 third times negative 3 plus 3. So 1 third times negative 3, that's negative 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. So negative 1, 2 on the graph. This is a different function, isn't it? Am I doing that right? I don't know if I'm doing that right. Here we go. Let's take a look. So I'm taking the negative 1 and I'm putting it into the function. So, oh, no, 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 no. I did that wrong. This is wrong. This is not wrong. This is a new example. Okay, no, we're good. We're good. I'm looking at a different example, and so I got confused by that for a second. So if I take this 0, the fact that g of x is 0, and I plug it here, I get uh, 1 third times 0 plus 3, which is 3. So therefore, I have 0, 3. If I take the 1 and I plug it into the g of x function, I get 3. So 1 third times 3 plus 3 equals 1 plus 3, which is 4. So I get 1, 4. If I take the 2, I get uh, 1. No, wait, not the 2. I take the 6. I take 1 third times 6 plus 3. I get uh, 5, as in 2, 5. So if I take the n... This is 3 times n. So then I go 1 third times 3n plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. Plus 3 so plus 3. And then that means I get n comma n plus 3. And that's totally the relationship that I have here in the table. 1 plus 3 is 4. 2 plus 3 is 5. Nice. So we have the equation h of x equals x plus 3. Okay, the key thing here with this lesson, this lesson 15, is that you can take a function and transform it. You can take one function that's not the parent function, x, and you can do some manipulation to its output, and that will eventually in turn give you another linear function, something that we should be able to study and analyze, make predictions about. And sure enough, there it is. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Okay. In closing, lesson 15, day two. In closing, if f of x equals x, and that's given, how would you graph f of x equals kx by hand? Um, I would uh, start by plotting, or not really plotting, but using outputs of f of x and multiplying by k. 
So I did that before where I said, I know that one, one becomes one, two, because I've doubled everything that was in there. Um, uh, two, two, two becomes two, four, because I'm doubling the Y output. So that's what I'm saying here is I'm doubling the outputs. Explain how you would graph X plus K by hand. Well, okay, so I'm using the output and I'm adding K amounts. So using output of f of x equals x and um, multiply and add by k. So we have two things now, we have two constants. We have the mix of two constants. So really I'm just going to say mixing one and two. But I would do step one first because the order of operation says to multiply and then add. So I'm going to say that to follow order of operations. Okay. All right, well, can you graph a linear function by hand using the transformations? I, I hope so. I hope that the idea was you could uh, uh, recognize the shift, recognize the steepness of change of angle, recognize maybe flipping over the x-axis, some sort of... Um, modification and we've covered every single modification that can typically be done with a linear function what's the location of the x oh my god excuse me what's the location of the x intercept of f well right now the x intercept of f is at negative two but because i'm taking the function and i'm shifting it to the right and then i'm oh my god i'm not even showing you there we go because I'm taking the function f of x and I'm shifting it to the right, so it's going to shift to here. And then I'm going to shift it up two spaces. So, boom, boom. I should use a different color now. Let's use red. Red is coming across nicely. Right there. So, negative three. Oh, my bad. How is the x-intercept of f transformed? I got them the wrong answer. Negative three. Okay, so the x-intercept, it looks like, it looks like we're going to shift it to the right, to the right one space, and up two spaces. Different color, different color time. We're going to shift the x-intercept to the right one space and then up two spaces. So that means that every point is shifted to the right one space and up two spaces, including um, this point right here to the right one space and up two spaces. That makes this point its original, but now it becomes the x-intercept. All right, knowing the shift up and down, side to side. All right, problem set. Problem set for homework. Please make sure that you work it through and um, sketch and describe. For sure, for sure, for sure, describe. All right. Lesson 15 is over. Once that problem set is done, I'll start lesson 16 notes with the next video. Probably the notes that you should do on Wednesday.